We often don't think about this. It's not something that often even impinges on our consciousness. And I've realized just how much not just having sort of a good competent presentation, but knowing those secret keys to how we are viewed by people who might think differently than we do. Because I'm here to tell you ladies, based on all the research that I have done, there are some very key ways that men think differently than we do. And it does impact us whether we know it or not. So one of the key factors in being a woman of effectiveness and influence really is having this, I hate to say it, but it's sort of like this secret knowledge because they will never talk about it, but we need to know it if we want that good corporate intelligence that's gonna allow us to take things to that next level and have that more that we often know that we have inside of us. In the men's world, let's put up the first slide, Valerie. In the, in the men's mind, your personal world and your work world are two different planets and never the two shall meet. You leave personal world in the morning, you get in the car and you're basically crossing a mental bridge. And you go across this bridge and by the time you get off the elevator on the 10th floor in the morning, you are in working world. You are in the business world. And these two rules, these two worlds, function by two completely different sets of rules. Completely different sets of rules. And that is not how women tend to view the world. To, we don't function by two different laws of gravity in our workplace life. Valerie, put up the next slide. Here's what we see life as like. We have this thing called life. It's our whole life. And work is a part of life, but it's part of life. We don't view the two things as being so completely different that you are almost functioning by such completely different laws of gravity. And this is what men view that, for example, it's almost as different. The laws of gravity are so different, the natural laws, that it's almost as if in one world you drop a pen and it falls to the ground because the law of gravity works this way. In the other world, it's almost so different that you drop the pen and it floats completely different natural laws. And as the guys said, you gotta understand, I didn't come up with this. I'm just fitting in to these pre-existing natural laws. And they view it as being so immutable and just the way it is, that if you are not functioning according to those laws of gravity, it's kind of this disconcerting thing like she just doesn't get it or he you know if there's a man who doesn't either they just don't get it they're just they're just not business like they're not professional well let me tell you something that was a big surprise to me we all view emotions in you know fighting back tears we all view that as being inappropriate like i said and unprofessional what i hadn't realized is that getting emotional to a guy is way more than fighting back tears. There is far more that they look at it and they go, oh, this person's getting emotional, okay? And when that happens, it has a big impact on how we are viewed. Very sensitive issue. However, I would be doing a very big disservice if I did not mention it because it may not affect a lot of the women in this room. It might, it may not, but it probably affects some of those you manage, and you probably see it in the workplace and may not have known what a big deal this is. And it's basically about a third of the women on my survey, of the white collar women on my survey, said that they sometimes dressed in a way that showed off a good figure. This is part of sort of what we view as we want to present ourselves well, we want to feel attractive, we want to feel confident, we want to wear the latest styles. Let's see that slide. It's sort of a, sort of a sex in the city kind of world. And we want to be, we want to feel confident and good about ourselves. We want to be trendy. So this is just the way you present yourself. 
And the problem is that because we women, our brains really are wired differently from men. We don't have quite the same visual wiring. We don't know how they perceive that. We don't understand how it is perceived, and it is largely not a perception that we would want. Fear of being found out as inadequate is a man's most painful feeling. Write that down. The fear of being found out as inadequate is a man's most painful feeling. In the workplace, in the personal life, whatever it is, inadequacy is his worst feeling, okay? And so because we don't have that same fear, and necessarily, at least in the same degree, we don't realize that we can be approaching them with this hitting this nerve, and we're not doing it on purpose, if a man is doing it, he's doing it on purpose to try to undermine the other man. We can do it without having any idea that is the nerve that we're hitting, that you're not good enough, you've been exposed as an imposter, I'm gonna challenge you, you don't know what you're doing, you're inadequate. That nerve that we would never want, most of the cases, we would never want to hit. Okay, now remember I said there are some things that Men say, you shouldn't take things personally. Why are you taking things personally? And I realize there are some things men take personally. Okay, this is it. Okay, this is the area. And we, we sometimes miss it. We say, He's, how many of us have thought this? He's just threatened by a strong and competent woman. He's just threatened. And you know what? Yeah, he is. But it's not just by a strong and competent woman. By anybody. Okay, they have the sense that over, they're not just oversensitive to us, they're oversensitive to each other too. It's just men know how to navigate with each other so they don't trip that up unless it's on purpose. So what are some of these samples, these triggers, what are some of these things that do trigger this hot button of self-doubt and insecurity about their adequacy? I will encourage you ladies, if you doubt what I'm saying, totally fine. If you don't believe what I've said, I totally understand. If you find some of it offensive, I did too. But what I would encourage you, don't believe me. Pick one thing and try it. Just try it. See what happens. And I think the response that you get and the doors you see opening and the positive relationships you start to experience in the office that may have been a little contentious or you may have sort of felt like you were bumping up against that perception, the response that you get, I think, is gonna be the best possible incentive for you to continue. We will always run up against, I'm not gonna minimize it, we will always run up against good old-fashioned chauvinistic bias from time to time but I can't tell you how much of an opportunity there seems to be, based on all these interviews and surveys, for women who will learn the male culture and understand how to work with it to be perceived well.